Hi there, Darren at Protopilot here. And today in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can create those scrolling animations that you see on so many websites these days. So Apple's quite famous for it on their website. So this is when you scroll down the page and actually the web page is using your scroll position to drive animation. And there's actually two things that are going on in these in these particular scrolling animations. There's the the fact that the scrolling is actually driving the animation. So that's the continuous motion part of it. And then there's another mechanism that's being used. And that's that's the fact that when you scroll to a certain position, that triggers a self running animation. Okay, so we're going to look at how you can do both of those things. And I'm just going to go through this quick demo of what we're going to be building. We're not going to be building everything in this demo because a lot of it is repetitive and we don't need to really go through all of it for you to kind of get the concepts. So I'm just going to touch on the two concepts, kind of cherry pick out certain parts for us to go through. But effectively, this will be the demo we'll be working on. Okay, so I'm just going to change my cursor to a arrow cursor. Okay, so I'm just going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse and I'm going to start scrolling and you can see as soon as I start scrolling, we can see that the first thing we're, we're affecting is the, is the navigation of the website and then that's going to scroll off and then as we continue to scroll, we're now driving this animation, which is then going to animate off the screen. The next part of the animation is going to fade in these, this image wall of lovely looking pies. And you can see I'm actually driving the animation so I can, I can actually go backwards as well. So I can go forwards and backwards. Okay. So we get to the, the image wall. So let's scroll past that. And then we get to the next part of the, of the web page animation, find like-minded pie stars. And again, we're still using this continuous motion, but in a second, you're going to, we're going to hit a trigger point animation. So as I scroll down and you can see there that this, this orange pie here came in under its own steam. It wasn't connected to the continuous motion of the scroll. I was just using a trigger point. So, Hey, when you get to this scroll position, animate in, and then the animation was, was being um, done in a more traditional way. Um, I'm going to carry on scrolling down and I'm going to get to another trigger point. And then again, you can see that the orange pie is animated off under its own steam. And then finally I get to this join now button. Okay. So this is what we're going to be going through in this video. We're going to be touching on both those animation mechanisms. So stay tuned and let's get into it and see how we can do this. Okay then. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of take you through the structure of the Pi file, um, because there's some things you need to know about how the scroll is actually set up. Okay. So if I just zoom out for a second here, just make my screen a bit bigger. Okay. So we've got this, we've got this scroll view set up here in the layers panel. So that's the size of the entire screen here, this, this kind of fake web page. And within this scroll container, we've got this object called, I've called faux scroll object. Now to make a scroll container actually scroll, we need stuff inside of it. And that's the job of this, this effectively this, this rectangle, because not all of our stuff is going to be in the scroll container. A lot of it's going to be outside the scroll container and it's just being driven by the scroll position. Okay. So I've got this rectangle here. You can see it's actually got a fill of zero. I don't want to see the rectangle. It just needs to be present to make the scroll work. Okay. So that's, that's the first really important part to, to how to do this, this, this particular effect. Okay, moving on. Now this, the next thing that I've actually, I actually did is it's really hard to know where, where you are in the scroll position and how things are actually scrolling. So because we haven't got a reference point really of what's scrolling because we've got nothing in the scroll. Okay. So what I did and what we're going to do first is we're going to build this scroll position helper. And this helper is just going to help us understand exactly where we are in the, as far as the scroll position is concerned. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my variables panel here and I'm going to add a variable. And by default, we get our number variable, which is exactly what we want here. We just want to track the position, the numeric position of the scroll. And 
I'm just going to call this variable scroll. Okay. Um, let me just turn, these are some of the, um, just, just as an aside, these are the, some of the animation parts which we're not going to be building. So these are all the already baked bits. So just ignore that for now, because as I said in the intro, we're just going to be focused on certain parts. Okay, back to our scroll helper. So I've added this, this variable here. What I want to add next is a detect trigger. And I want to target the scroll container. So that's the scroll container that I set up in the layers panel. And the property I want to target is the scroll container scroll position. Okay. So within this detect trigger, I'm going to add an assign response. And I want to target the scroll variable. So I'm going to choose that there. And inside of the formula input, it's going to open that up. I'm going to create a formula here. So I want to find the scroll position and I want to use the scroll position scroll property, which is actually called scroll offset. And I'm going to click OK. So what I'm doing here is I'm detecting when the scroll moves. OK, so we're detecting the position of the scroll offset. The scroll offset gives us the numeric value of where the scroll is at. OK. And so what we can do now is if I just turn on the little bug icon so I can see my scroll position. And I'm just going to go to preview here. Bearing in mind that nothing's really, really connected yet. If I start scrolling with my with my my mouse, you can see that this position is going up. So you can see that even though nothing is actually scrolling, i.e. because we've got nothing in the scroll view that we can see and we haven't connected anything up yet, we can see that the scroll is actually working because the number's going up. And this is going to be really valuable because I'll be able to see what this number is and it'll just help me decide how fast or slow I want the scroll animations to be and where I want those other trigger points to be. Okay, so that's the first part done. Let's close off the preview window. So in the next part, we're going to do the first example. And the first example we're going to look at is one of the, continu the continuous animations. Okay, so to create a continuous animation, we're going to use a trigger inside of Protopie's arsenal called Chain. You're probably familiar with this. It's quite a well-used trigger. I've done a few other videos on, on the Chain trigger as well. It's uh, incredibly powerful. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our interaction panel. I'm going to add the Chain trigger. And we're going to target the scroll. And again, we want the scroll scroll property. Next up, we're going to add a remove response inside of our chain trigger. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to animate off this navigation layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the move response and we're going to choose the nav. I'm just going to search for it here. And I'm going to set the, so the first bunch of numbers is the amount of scroll I want to scroll by. So in this instance, I'm just going to make that, leave it at zero because it's the starter position. I'm going to scroll to 20. Okay, so that's the amount of scroll so that's, that I'm going to be using. And then in the Y offset, because we're, we're obviously animating up and down, so that's the Y um, offset here, we're going to, I'm going to put in zero because I want it to start at the same position. Again, my navigation is already set at the position of zero. So if we just check it over here in the layers panel, you can see it's at a Y position of zero. So we want this to be a Y position of zero. And I'm going to move it minus 96. Now you're probably wondering why I'm using a minus number. So with scrolls, the the, the direction of scroll moves in a different in the opposite direction to any other objects which are not within a scroll. Okay. So that's why the scroll offset is a positive number, but the navigation offset is a minus number because navigation, which we can see here in the layers panel, is actually sitting outside of the scroll. Okay. So important part to, to remember there. Okay, so let's um continue on. We're going to add an opacity response. 
And this is for the, the first part for the, um, the title here. So I'm going to target the title layer. And again, I've got another range. So basically any responses I add inside of my chain trigger is going to give me this range. Okay. So for the next range, I'm going to, because I finished here at 20, I'm going to start this range at 20. And I'm going to range it from 20 to 120. So it's going to move the scroll position by 100 pixels. And I'm going to map to this the opacity of this title. Okay, so it's going to start at 100%. So it's fully opaque. And as I scroll down, it's going to animate to zero opacity. So it's going to fade out effectively. Okay, so I'm just going to preview this. So again, we've got a little helper here helping us out. So I'm going to start to scroll and you can see that as I scroll that the, um, the navigation is scrolling away. And if I continue to scroll, you can see that my, my title fades out. Okay. So this is effectively how you create that continuous motion. And if we just turn on my animations here, which is the one which effectively animates out these images. I'm just going to switch that on. I'm just going to open this up to see, to show you why I'm not going to step through it. So you can see it's really quite a laborious process actually building these kind of animations. You, ne you, you effectively need to add every, every single property you want to animate and you have to figure out what that, what that range is going to be. So you can see if I just step through these, each one of these has got a range and it's really is as, as painstaking as it is to do normal animation. Okay. So not very really interesting to watch me do this, but effectively what I've just showed you is all you need to know to be able to do your own animations. Okay. So if I leave that turned on and I come back to my preview window now, so this is driving this, this animation of the images you can see now, as I scroll, we've got that animation all working. Okay, cool. So this about wraps up the first section of this video looking at the continuous animation. And next up, we're going to be looking at how we trigger pre-rolled animation. Okay, so in this next section, we're going to look at how we can create a pre-rolled animation. So this is the part, this is like the orange pie that you saw where I get to a certain point in scroll, which then triggers a pre-rolled animation. Okay, so the animation is not going to be driven by me moving my scroll position. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use a different trigger. So if you look up the um, in the documentation for Protopy, you'll see there's effectively two kinds of triggers to control motion. There's chain, which is the continuous motion. And then there's this other trigger called range, which is what we're going to use to do our pre-rolled animation. Okay. So I'm going to choose range here and range effectively has a bunch of properties here. So I can trigger an animation when I, when I'm between like before a certain position, when I'm after a certain position, if I'm between two positions and if I'm not between two positions. Okay. So lots of different options here. Um, first thing we want to do is we want to target the, um, the scroll layer. So we're just going to choose that in our target. And again, we want to, we want to target scroll position. So that's the property we want to target the range of. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose in between. So this little one here. So we're going to look for when the scroll position is in between two values. And the two values that I'm going to add is, obviously I've worked this out beforehand, 1847 and 2200. Okay, so that's the range within which I want to trigger some stuff, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to add a move response inside of this range. And what we're going to do is we're going to target the orange pie. So that's called big pie. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to move it to a X position of one, four, four, eight. So obviously the pie 
is you can kind of see it here it's currently got its opacity set down to zero but it's sitting off on the right hand side so we want to move it in on the on the x origin to to the center of the screen so we're moving it on the x property here and because it's a pre-rolled animation i'm going to change the duration so i want it to run out at a 0 0.4 duration okay now just to show you something so i've actually got the origin set to center because not only do i want to move the pie i want it to roll like it's just rolled in off screen and to do that i want to actually um, add, a, add a rotation okay so what i'm going to do is going to add a rotate property and i'm going to target the big pie again And what I want to do is I want to rotate it by, so I'm going to leave by selected and I'm going to type in 45 degrees. And I want it, so I'm going to leave it as a clockwise rotation. And again, I'm going to change the duration to 0 0.4. Okay, finally, we need to change the opacity. So I'm going to fade it in as well. So you can see it's currently at opacity zero. So I'm going to add an opacity response. I've still got the big pie selected, so it's targeted it by default. And I'm just gonna change opacity to 100. And again, I want that to come in at 0 0.4. Okay. Okay, so let's give that a test. So let's open up our preview window. And I'm gonna start scrolling. So scroll, 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 scroll past our first animation. And then we get our image wall coming in. And then I'm going to soon hit that trigger point. And voila, in comes our orange pie animation. Okay. So if I just scroll backwards for a second, now you can see that it's not going away because you need to set a, we need to set a different animation trigger point for it to be removed. So let's close preview and come back to our pie file. And what we're gonna do is gonna add another range. And again, we want to target the scroll layer and in scroll position. And, but this time we're going to choose not between. So the one to the right of the between option. Because we want to reverse the animation, we want to now know when it's outside of that particular range. And we just need to add exactly the same range. So that's going to be 1847, 2200. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to add a reset response. And we're going to target the big pie. And we're going to make the duration of the reset response 0 0.4. Okay, so let's just preview that and see how that's working. Okay, so we're going to start scrolling down. Pass our image wall. We're gonna to get to the trigger point of our orange pie. So that's the point where it's coming in. And if I just go back, you can see now it's going out. In, out. So that's using those two ranges. Okay, so let me just turn on the final baked part, which we're not gonna be building. So this is just the join button. So again, you can see the join button's got both a hide and a show, which has been done in exactly the same way as these two ranges. And what we can do now is preview it and we can go through the whole animation. Continuous motion. Non-continuous trigger point motion animation. And then finally we've got another non-continuous trigger point animation. Okay, so that about wraps up this video of looking at scrolling animation. If you like the video, then please give it a like. If you want to hear when I drop more content on the channel, then please do subscribe. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take it easy.